Coming up on Arirang News, President Moon Jae-in says the South Korean firm SK Bioscience is in talks with Novavax to procure enough COVID-19 vaccines for another 20 million people, in addition to the doses already secured in theory for South Korea's whole population. President Moon is reshuffling his cabinet, nominating his foreign affairs and security adviser Chung Yi-yong to serve as foreign minister. He'll be reaching out to set up talks between the U.S. and North Korea. And the government announces measures for the upcoming Lunar New Year holiday to support people's livelihoods and prevent the spread of COVID-19. It's 5 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thanks for tuning in to Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting. President Moon Jae-in has announced a cabinet reshuffle, replacing his foreign minister. He's nominated Chung yi yong his special advisor on foreign affairs and security. Chung has experience as envoy to both the United States and North Korea, so that's expected to help him in arranging new talks. Our Hong Yu has the details. President Moon Jae-in has picked special advisor for foreign affairs and security Chung yi yong as his new foreign minister. Chung has extensive experience, including three years in charge of foreign affairs and security matters as director of the National Security Office before becoming Moon's aide. The Blue House said the reshuffle is an effort to revitalize diplomacy ahead of the start of the Biden administration. We hope he brings our diplomatic horizons and status to the next level by making further developments for peace on the Korean Peninsula and the president's new southern and northern policies. The appointment is also believed to portray the Moon administration's willingness to revive talks with the North, which has been severed since the second North Korea-U.S. summit in Hanoi. Chong has experience as a special envoy to the U.S. and North Korea. Moreover, he is seen as a figure who has earned trust from North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, so he has the capability to play the role of facilitator in North Korea-U.S. talks. He is known to have played a key role in organizing previous talks between the leaders of the two Koreas and the U.S. After delivering President Moon's letter to Kim Jong-un in March 2018, Chung visited President Trump in the White House and told Trump that Kim wishes to meet him. This led to the Singapore summit that June. After being nominated for the role of Foreign Affairs Minister, Chung said he would do his best to lay down the roots of peace on the Korean Peninsula. President Moon also picked Hwang Yi as the new Minister of Culture, Sports and Tourism and Kwon Jae Sung as the Minister of SMEs and Startups during his cabinet reshuffle. Hong Yu, Arirang News. South Korea, having already sourced enough COVID-19 vaccines for its entire population, in theory, is working on a deal that would secure enough vaccine doses for another 20 million people. President Moon Jae-in spoke about the deal today. President Moon was speaking on a visit to a factory belonging to SK, which also has a deal to produce the AstraZeneca vaccine on consignment. The president vowed to support, vowed support for the country's bio companies so they can produce vaccines locally and give South Korea vaccine sovereignty. Moon again called for thorough preparations so that the country can achieve herd immunity by November. And he vowed to put a system in place to compensate people who experience any side effects. It's been exactly a year since the country reported its first case of COVID-19. Today, there were 404 new cases of those 373 local and 31 imported. More than 70 percent of the local infections were in the capital region at nursing facilities, saunas and churches. It's a slightly higher number than yesterday, but it seems the virus's third wave continues to subside. The authorities are watching closely for any cases of the new COVID-19 variants. Right now, there are more than 300 patients who are severely ill, and with 17 additional fatalities, the death toll is at 1,300. South Korea's jailed former president, Park Geun-hye, has tested negative for COVID-19 after having come in contact with an infected prison officer. According to the Justice Ministry, she came in contact with the person on Monday during a visit to a hospital outside of the Seoul Detention Center. And that person later turned out to have the virus. 
Pac is now quarantined at Seoul's St. Mary's Hospital, where she'll remain for some period of time despite the negative test. Because at 68 years old, she's in the high-risk group. Next month, South Korea will celebrate one of its biggest holidays, the Lunar New Year, known in Korean as Sola. Ahead of that, the Finance Ministry has announced measures to support small businesses and local economies and to prevent the spread of the virus. Om ji has more. With Seolnal coming up in about three weeks, the government has announced measures to support regional economies and people's livelihoods. Finance Minister Hong Namgi said that to minimize the spread of the virus during the holiday, there will be COVID-19 screening stations set up across the country. Some of the screening stations will be run by the government and others by private medical institutions for a total of 620 of them. The private institutes that choose to take part will get around 23 million U.S. dollars in total. There will also be 74 hospitals in operation that specialize in infectious diseases. Also, the ministry will run a campaign encouraging people to find non-contact ways to spend time together, like sending presents by smartphone or mail and meeting on video calls rather than in person. Considering that we're in a pandemic, the ministry will run a campaign promoting a non-contact solar holiday, encouraging people to perform their ceremonies and rituals online. Also, we're encouraging donations by temporarily offering extra tax deductions. To stabilize the prices of fruits, vegetables and meat ahead of the holiday, the ministry will increase the supply of those in high demand for use in rituals. The supply of apples and pears will go up by about 80 percent and the ministry will allow the import of up to five tons of eggs duty-free. Also, this winter in South Korea has been especially cold, so the ministry will provide heaters to 653 facilities housing socially vulnerable people. Om Jiyong, Arirang News. South Korea's public sector in 2019 added more jobs than ever under the Moon administration's drive to increase hiring by the government and by state-run firms. According to Statistics Korea, a total of 2.6 million people were working in the public sector, up 151,000, or 6.1 percent, from the year before. Public sector jobs accounted for 9.5 percent of all jobs in the country, up half a percentage point on year. Public sector hiring increased for all age groups, but the biggest rise was for people in their 60s at 23 percent. The city of Seoul has deployed a pair of trucks equipped with a high-tech system to measure the fine dust pollution in the air and track where it's coming from. The Seoul Metropolitan Government says this is the first such system in the country. The findings, it says, will be used to come up with management plans for areas where fine dust concentrations are high and to evaluate facilities for potential mandatory reductions. The trucks will be measuring dust levels in nine districts of Seoul until March. Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon, and for that I'm joined on the line by Dr. Yang jun Sok, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Yang, thanks for coming on. Good to have you back. Happy to be here. Well, overnight in Washington, Congress held a confirmation hearing for Janet Yellen, the former Fed chair, who's been picked by Joe Biden to serve as Treasury Secretary. She indicated that she would take a hard line against currency manipulation by other countries. She also emphasized a need for stimulus measures. Tell us about Yellen's hearing, Professor. Okay, well, Janet Yellen enjoys bipartisan support of Republicans and Democrats, uh, so everybody do, uh, does expect the uh, nomination to pass without a problem. Eight former Treasury secretaries of both U.S. parties set a letter of support for Janet Yellen, uh, and there's a strong support in Congress. But while the nomination will be sim uh, fairly simple, uh, the type of policies that she advocates may not be. Uh, now, you just mentioned that... Uh, Janet Yellen mentioned the need for large uh, fiscal policy, but some Republican senators are reluctant to support such policy, citing increasing government debt and uh, government deficits. Uh, but 
the uh, Republicans' objections sound somewhat unconvincing because these senators were not worried about increasing the deficit when President Trump lowered the, defi- uh, lowered the taxes and increased the deficit before the coronavirus started. Now, uh, so for some other issues, uh, Janet Yellen did agree that China's illegal, unfair, and abusive practices were a problem, and she will use full array of policy tools to combat China's misbehavior, including horrendous human rights abuses. Uh, she, st- uh, she stood for raising the minimum wage. And we should note that uh, Janet Yellen's original specialty was in labor economics, so she will be definitely be interested in uh, job recovery uh, while she's at the Treasury. She also cited uh, uh, the uh, uh, environment. Uh, she would appoint a senior official in charge of climate matters in, at the uh, Treasury, creating a hub to assess financial risks and study tax incentives for electric cars and other environmentally friendly policies. Well, investors seem to like what Yellen said, especially about the stimulus. Stocks on Wall Street were up. Korean stocks today were as well. What's the story in the markets? Okay, well, as you mentioned, the U.S. markets, the uh, three major indices were all up. NASDAQ did uh, very well. It went up by 1.53 percent. Stock uh, tech stocks were leading the recovery. Uh, Now, the analysts just saying uh, what you just said, it's uh, due to the anticipation of large stimulus. I have a bit of a doubt about that because just a few days ago, the same analysts were saying that the uh, anticipation of the large stimulus was already baked into the market. Uh, But anyhow, uh, I think a more likely explanation is that, first, there's a honeymoon effect for new presidents, and uh, President Trump is withdrawing without any additional problems. They have been expecting, uh, perhaps, that some of the uh, President Trump's supporters uh, may start another violent uh, riot, uh, but that doesn't seem to be happening. So uh, things are quieter than what a lot of people were worried about. Now, European and Asian markets... uh, FTSE, CAC, and DAX were all down slightly. Nikkei was down slightly, while Shanghai and Hong Kong, Hang Seng was up. Uh, up. Hang Seng especially by 0.90% so far. Uh, but I think they're basically waiting to see uh, what the Biden administration uh, will do. And they were paying special attention to what Janet Yellen was going to say in her nomination hearings. COSPI, uh, it was up two days in a row, uh, but it's not back to record-breaking levels. It went up today 0.71% to 3114.55. COSAC was up today 2.08% to 977.66. And as you noted, uh, no signs of unrest in Washington, uh, which is locked down in a pretty incredible scene ahead of the inauguration of Joe Biden in just a matter of hours. So let's look at uh, what changes in U.S. policy this could uh, bring in terms of the economy and on trade. How do you see this affecting Korea? Okay, well, as far as trade is concerned, uh, it should be more consistent and predictable. Uh, President Trump, uh, even though we had a pretty good idea of what he wanted overall, uh, he tended to have these wild swings depending on his mood. Uh, President Biden will probably be more consistent, and he will stick with established international agreements and norms uh, and WTO, so it will be a uh, perhaps much more stable environment. Uh, U.S.-China trade friction will continue, but it's not likely to get worse unless there are problems in human rights in China or China trying to take firmer control of Hong Kong. Uh, President Trump really didn't care about human rights issues, but Biden and uh, the Democrats will probably take more concern about that. Now, uh, as for Korea's exports to the United States, it's likely to rise because of the uh, large stimulus plan. And if the infrastructure program that Biden wants goes through, it may require more steel, it may require more uh, manufactured goods, which may mean an early withdrawal of Trump steel and aluminum quotas and tariffs and general increase of exports to the United States. Worry Financial uh, Research Institute Institute estimates that uh, uh, after the Biden uh, administration comes into power, uh, there will be about 0.3 percent additional growth in GDP for Korea, 0.1 percent from increase in exports, and 0.2 percent indirect effect uh, from reduction in uncertainty, uh, which will lead to higher investment and consumption in Korea. 
That'll be an interesting thing to watch as it unfolds, Professor. Thanks so much for sharing your insights with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. That brings us to the end of this newscast. Thank you for watching. More live news coming your way at 7 p.m. Korea time.